Tendinopathy is a pretty detailed pathology with so much going on. So it can get really overwhelming with trying to explain all of this to a patient. Quite often we get tied up in trying to explain the pathology and the ins and outs of the cellular changes of the tendon, which usually goes way over someone's head. But on the flip side, much of the information online is way too basic, or it tells people that it's inflammation of a tendon, so no wonder people are often afraid to continue loading. I come across these challenges really commonly with students. We would want to find a happy medium with providing enough detail around what tendinopathy is without it all flying over someone's head. But we also want to give enough detail so that your patient can start to see why the strategies you'll be encouraging, like loading the tendon, make sense. So with all the guidelines saying patient education is an important part of the management step, what might this look like in practice? Let's look at where we can go with that in simple but effective ways. So you've got a patient that you or perhaps someone else has diagnosed with tendinopathy. And let's assume that for this case that like most of the tendinopathies we see in practice, it's in a degenerative stage. We will be wanting to use specific and progressive loading approaches in our management. So let's start off by finding out what the patient knows. So here we can use some really simple questions. Do you know much about tendons or what they are? Have you heard of a term called tendinopathy or tendinitis before? Your patient might know a lot or they might not know anything, or they may even have some unhelpful beliefs about what's already going on. In my experience, most people have heard of the word tendinitis, so they often come with an understanding that they have a weak or an inflamed tendon. So getting a baseline of knowledge and understanding is really helpful here. So let's look at how we might explain degenerative tendinopathy. And you'll note, I'm not going to be using the word degenerative here. I don't think anyone feels empowered or encouraged to do much when they hear the word degenerative or degeneration. And quite frankly, this word can be misinterpreted as meaning they have a condition that will get worse and worse and worse. But I'll keep it basic. It's a lot easier when you break the education down into single parts. So part one, explaining tendons in their role. First, it helps to explain to the patient what a tendon is and what it does. You might find your own ways of explaining what a tendon is. This is a good idea to talk about how strong and robust tendons are and that they usually respond really well to load, especially tensile load. And that's what they're designed to do. This is a nice way to set the scene and provide reasoned reassurance and confidence in the patient's own body. Our next part can be discussing what happens with tendinopathy. We can then explain that tendinopathy, and you'll note not using the word degenerative, degenerative or degeneration, is a common long-term but often temporary change in the structure and function of the tendon. It's not an injury that heals with rest, although as the patient has probably found, it usually feels better when they don't use it. The tendinopathy occurred over time for a number of reasons. So here it's helpful to point out the contributing factors that you've found in your patient's history. These might include things like age, medication use, genetics, and often people find that it happens when there's been a sudden, unaccustomed load on the tendon. This is a great time to link back to the patient's story. You said that you noticed it when you started sprint training during your running or when you started painting the house. Linking back to the patient's story is a great way to help educate them in a tailored way and allow it to make logical sense for them. Here, it might also be important to start to explain some of the changes that happen to the nervous system when we have tendon pain for a long period of time. I then find it helpful to outline at this point that normally a tendon adapts to new or increased loading by getting stronger, and it can tolerate a lot of force. But in some cases, like in the case of the patient, that excessive, new or unaccustomed load and other factors has led to a response in the tendon that's resulted in this change to its structure and its function. What is interesting is that these changes that your tendon has undergone to become like this actually occur quite similarly in tendons that are completely unloaded. So too much unaccustomed load 
and too little load can compromise the structure and function of the tendon. So it's helpful for us to find a happy medium in managing load with the tendon to allow it to get better. In our next part with the patient, we can outline the management and check in with them. You can then ask the patient if they have any questions or concerns and check in with whether this explanation about what's happening fits with their understanding. We can then talk about the management plan, especially loading, and these differ on an individual level depending on what the patient's needs are. Let's have a look at some specific challenges that often come up in our patient education around tendinopathy. Often students and patients find it difficult to think about why we're using exercise or promote the use of exercise to load a tendon when it actually hurts. So it's so, so important to explain to the patient why they are doing loading exercises for something that might feel injured if we expect them to adhere to our prescription. Exercise and loading of the tendon is aimed at building capacity of the tendon to take on more load. This can also help to change that abnormal structure and function of the tendon that's contributing to the pain. By loading the tendon in a safe way, we are building up that capacity to take load like it's designed to do. And at the same time, it actually helps with the pain. This means that we can build up the tendon in a gradual way so that it can adapt. So it's ready to take on all that force that you need to go back to, like the sprint training or painting the house. If some of the exercises are slightly uncomfortable, it is helpful to let the patient know that this is normal. So we should give them, for example, a rating on a visual analog scale to try and stay under and let them know that this isn't causing harm. It's also important to watch them do a whole set of the exercise in the clinic so that you can check that they're not worsened afterwards and can see firsthand with the patient that it's safe to do. What if the patient has overdone it? Sometimes we need a phase where we try and modify activity enough to help get the pain under control and allow things to settle before loading. This is because with tendinopathy, the nerves surrounding the tendon have become really sensitized. And there might be other factors here, such as inflammation of the sheath or other structures around the tendon. This means we need a period where the tendon won't be subjected to such high levels of load so that it can settle before starting to load it again. If the patient needs the stage in their management, be really specific about what those activities are. We can't just generically say to everyone just to rest, for example, as rest means different things to different people. It would be quite rare that we would have someone stopping everything, so find alternatives that the patient can do perhaps walking, swimming, cycling for a period, and let them know how long this will be, often a couple of weeks. If you're not sure how long this period will be, then it's okay to let the patient know that sometimes finding the right level of loading and activity to allow the tendon to settle can be a bit of an experiment. Making small adjustments to the load at first might be enough rather than cutting things back completely. So I find it helpful to make suggestions of where the loading can be reduced at a minimum, but let the patient know what else might need to be cut back if it's not settling. Once things have settled, the tenon can then be gradually reintroduced to load, again in a gradual and safe way to make sure things don't just flare back up again. The key is to start this loading early and gradually build up while monitoring their symptoms. So let's summarize. Explaining tendinopathy can be overwhelming. So keep it simple and tailored to your patient. Keep in mind, what does my patient need to know? And what are my patient's concerns? And be sure to address these. Be strategic with your language. We can't tell someone they have degeneration and scare them with all the injury talk and then expect them to adhere to loading, especially when it's uncomfortable. So let them know about what tendons are designed to do and why loading is helpful. In some stages of tendinopathy, the tendon needs some relative unloading. So make sure the patient knows that this is temporary, but an important stage just for things to settle.